College Basketball Review courtside back for a fifth season. You see a familiar face there. That's Taha Rao. You Sup, might everybody. remember him from Matt's Madness. We, of course, don't do that show anymore. Uh, T moved out to California. It's been a while since he's been on our CBA Thanks. Review podcast platform. What's been new with you? My hair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know that. My hair, my job, everything is new. Um, the thing that hasn't changed is my love for sports, my love for what I do now, which is fitness. So um, I'm keeping close, man. I've been watching basketball, been watching hockey. It's big out here. Uh, the Rangers are doing well. So uh, both the LA teams are out. So they got nothing to root for here other than uh, the failure for my Celtics, which maybe I don't know if a lot of people know that. Um, but, yeah, man, it's been a good change. But the sunshine's doing me well, doing me good. No, I'm jealous of you. Uh, it's a little bit cold up here in Rochester. It's like 64 yeah. degrees as a high, so you are you got us beat there. I don't miss that. <laughs> I don't blame you either. I'm trying to not miss it soon. <laughs> uh, you're the perfect guest to have on, though. I mean, like, you know, we, we go back to our Syracuse days, but you mentioned it. You're a Celtics fan. Uh, college right. basketball is in the offseason, but the NBA is still going on, so – even though this is a college basketball show, figured, hey, let's add a little bit of an NBA twist to it today. Yeah. Right? <laughs> let's get going. Uh, you know, tonight we might have a little bit of a different answer for you, but as it stands, as we're recording it, the Celtics are in the finals. We're waiting to see who else is going to be in between the Mavs and the Timberwolves, but I think we all know that it's going to be the Mavericks. I don't see the Timberwolves coming back now down 3-1. Maybe they will. Do you, I mean, do you have a different answer there? Listen, it's oh, what is it? What's the stance right now? I think it's oh for 154 or 155. Oh the record for the teams that have been down three zip. The only, all I know is in my lifetime, it's gonna happen one time. So, if there's ever a time it's gonna happen, it could happen where every single game up to this point, the losing side has led that game in the fourth quarter. The Timberwolves have led every single game in the fourth quarter. So the fact that they just can't close these games out, the fact that they did it one time now, maybe that exudes some sort of confidence in the squad. And, man, Ant-Man, like, that that game was his game right there. Like, even if they end up losing the series, this guy's got the lead on lockdown, I think, for the next 5, 10, 15 years. But if there's ever a time that any team can do it, I can see them doing it. But am I going to pick them to do it? No. We got a visitor right here for T2. Good thing. Okay. <laughs> We're good. He's, uh, he's at work right now, uh, but he's, take, he's taking a break to, to, do, to do the good of the podcast. Uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm with you right there. Um, Aunt Edwards is the guy. Like, I, I do see Dallas ultimately winning the series, but things will get real scary if Minnesota takes game, uh, what is it, game five? Game five, yep. Yeah, things will get real scary if that happens. Uh, yep. Some head, though. I mean, I kind of already know what you're going with, but uh, let's talk the NBA Finals. You got your Finals pick? And so we're assuming it's the Celtics and uh, Tim, the the Mavs, right? Yeah, let's go with that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I haven't answered this question yet. <laughs> um, I'm going to be a homer. Um, as much as my heart wants to say um, – or as much as my mind wants to say, honestly, that the Dallas Mavericks are going to win this series, I'm going to have to stay with my squad, especially with Chris Dobbs coming back. Um, I think we have, as far as top to bottom goes, I think we have the most complete team, um, even co if you compare it to the Mavs. I think the Mavs have hit um, lightning in a bottle once they got Gafford, once they got P.J. Washington from Charlotte. I think those guys have found new life, um, and they're one of the hotter teams after the All-Star break. But – that doesn't, you know, mean that the starting five for the Celtics isn't as complete as any uh, that I've seen. So I don't think we've been tested yet um, throughout the Eastern Conference playoffs just because first series you got Jimmy Butler out. Second series you got Dame out, right? I'm sorry, no. Second series you played who? Uh, it was Butler out. Butler out. Then we had uh, Cleveland. So we had Donovan Mitchell out um, after that game too. So I think – if we win the finals, none of that stuff is going to be looked at, and we're going to be champions. If we don't, it's going to be like, well, we all knew what was going to happen anyways. So that's where I stand. But I got I got C's. I'll go in six. 
I see that, and, and I definitely I respect the, the in six. No way anyone's sweeping these NBA finals. But I got to pose this to you because, like, right now, I'm looking at what Kyrie's doing, playing the best that he's played since his Cleveland days. I'm looking at what that man Luca's doing. I mean, let's be real. Like, do the Celtics – the Celtics got the squad, but do you think they got the best player on the court? Or do you think no. – I'll be real. Like, right now, Kyrie and Luca are playing better than Jason Tatum right now. Okay. Okay. A lot. So, or here's the thing. Crazy? When you say that, because to me, Kyrie is – a great, maybe the best number two option, like in the league currently. Maybe even like we can look at all time, but right now he's the best number two. He's proven it with LeBron. He's now doing it with Luka. Mm -hmm. I just think as a number one option, your responsibilities are heightened to a different level. So to compare him to Jason Tatum is a mm -hmm. little unfair to me, just because you're giving that ball to Tatum and that's the number one guy, right? Everyone knows that. That pressure is on him. When you give the ball to Kai, yeah, is he? He's. It, let's be clear. Like Dallas is Luca's team. He's not one mm -hmm. A. He's one, and Kyrie is two. It's not one A one B. Maybe when they're closing, it's one A one B. I think, and and I would say that maybe even sometimes Kyrie's one A when they're closing. Um, I think that's what really differentiates them is is the closing, right? Like I don't like the Celtics. With two minutes to go in a close game, they're going to a high pick and roll with Derek White. And you got yeah. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, right? Why are we going to? But that's telling you about a little bit about this team is that we don't really, I don't think we really have that kind of a closer. I think we play the entire game as a team and we finish the game as a team where I think sometimes at the end of games, you need a dog to go get you one. And Kai and Luke are those dogs. I see that. I think we both agree that it's going to go – Far. Like, this is not going to be a four-game series. It's not going to be a five-game series. Even if the Timberwolves end up getting in this, I still think, like, if they magically come back from down 3-0 yeah. and win this series, there's no way they're getting swept. Like, at that point, they're riding that uh, as far yeah. as they can. Well, that would be a good uh, fun matchup, too. Did you say your well, – how many games? I'm going to go – okay, I'm going to read – I'm going to edit mine. I'm going to go Celtics in seven, not six. I think we're going to bring it home at TD Garden. I will – dude, I might honestly – like, I know I'm saying the Mavs right now, but part of me also is saying Celtics in seven. <laughs> there you go. Come on over. Crazy coming out of me. Come on over, baby. <laughs> but, like, it, it just – like, that home advantage, that home court advantage in Boston is just different. Yeah. And they, I'm not going to lie. Crazy. Like, if I wasn't I, – I am – like I said, I am picking this with my heart a little bit. If I wasn't a fan of either team, I'm going to be straight up honest. I would probably pick Dallas. Again, going six or seven, like you're saying. But I got to stick with my team, man. I love it, man. Hey, we're going to reverse course a little bit to the college game. I've got an interesting one to pose here. Again, we're looking at the NBA Finals, going Ooh. off the fact that it's probably the Mavs and the Celtics. Uh, the worst of the worst. I'm saying, like, obviously you put Luka, you put Jalen Brown, you put anyone – on a Final Four team last year that couldn't get past UConn, they're leading him to the chip, like, without a doubt, right? Uh -oh. <laughs> you don't think so? You're saying, hold on, let me get this right. You're saying if you put any of these guys that you just named, JT, Jalen Brown, Luca, Kai, just one of those guys and just drop them on one of these college teams, they're going to lead that team to the national championship. I think like it's for sure the teams that made the tournament, right? Like if you're a if you're like oh, a yeah, team, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I'm you're not saying, taking like, anything away from those teams. You're just dropping these players into that, right? In the roster. Okay, I got you. But do you, you think like how like where does the bar end though? Like like how bad of a college team could still win it all if you add Luca to them? Like uh -huh. so, and that would be the guy I would say is someone okay. like Luka, who is i mean there's no answer for that at that level right like the dude is built like an nba player slash dad that you see at the gym working out but he's just gifted all-time gifted he's an all-time offensive player i think if you put like imagine him on a team with a bunch of dogs that just play defense in college right and you find that a lot in college where guys are going after it they want to they want to show the hustle they want to show the, the ability to play defense. If you do that, if you put four guys like that around Luca, 
I mean, they don't have to make a lot of shots because he'll take care of that. Um, but I'm trying to think of a roster that he could, like, take to, 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 to the league. I feel like you'd be better at answering that question. Like, the worst roster he could possibly take to, like, the Final Four or something. Okay, I got I got this one here. Let's start small, right? Okay. Mississippi Valley State went 1-30 and last year. They averaged 55 points a game. Like, can Luka lead them to the tournament? Like, if you put Luka on that team, they don't have a player over 6'8 on their roster last year. It looks like they had a couple 6'9 oh, guys. That's attended. a great question. But, like, you're putting Luka Doncic on that team. Like, because the thing with Luca is like, let's say you go on a pick and roll or something like that, right? Like, if another guy on your team can roll to the basket, can finish the play, now he his his strengths are gonna be height. That's what that's what Luca's gonna do. It's not just that Luca's the team's gonna be better just by Luca being there, but because he's there, everyone's strength is gonna be utilized a little bit more. So that I honestly. I mean, one in thirty. God, Lee, Mississippi Valley State. That's atrocious. I mean, they. I don't know about you said leading them to the tournament. I could see that. Um, okay. I don't know how far. I mean, again, like I said, it could be a complete turnaround. Uh, but w- w- what do you think? I'd love to know your thoughts on that. I think that there's a cutoff. I think that a team like that is just so bad that, like, and again, I didn't watch any of their games probably i just know that they like why would you watch a team like that if you know they're right. never going to make the tournament like i'm trying to watch these mid-major teams that are going to be playing in march not the ones that have no chance it's tough because you can take it as like there's great players in college but you get so much better when you're in the nba because that's all you're doing right yeah and like that's kind of what i'm trying to think here let's let's like Relook at this question a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. UConn. I'm I'm gonna go with a Final Four. I'll I'll okay. go to the Final Four team, right? UConn beat Illinois by 25 in the in the Elite Eight, actually. So they beat Illinois by 25 in the Elite Eight. Illinois was a top team all year long. You know they were in the top ten at some points. I mean, I think we could agree though that if you put Luke on Illinois, they, they beat UConn, right? Like yes. One thousand percent. And if you put Tatum on, did they beat UConn? If you say it again, if you put Tatum on Illinois, not Luca, but Tatum, do they still beat UConn? Are we putting current Jason Tatum or are we putting Duke Jason current. Tatum? Current Jason Tatum would lead them past. I agree with you. Yes, that's a grown man. I mean, I think that makes a huge difference, especially in basketball where. One guy can really impact the game, and one guy can shift everything, right? Like, if you have a guy that, you know, is deserving of a double team, now, again, that just opens everything up for all those guys. And it's not like it's high school or middle school. These guys know how to finish the plays. So, I mean, at that point, even Jason Tatum, yes, um, I think he could get the job done. Yes. So where – I guess my final thing is then is, like, where does the line end? We agree on Luka. We agree on Tatum. I would say that Kyrie. Of course, yes. I would say that he's playing right now. Yes. I would say Um, that Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown, I would agree with you. Okay, now we're getting close. Is there anyone after that, right? Like anyone after PJ Washington, I was saying. I'm gonna say something right now that you will probably disagree with, but having watched this guy. Over and over and over again, the impact he has on just winning and the moments. If you look at the moments, if you're watching Celtics games and you look at certain moments, this guy, and I mentioned him already a little bit, but it's always him. The ball finds his hands. He could be one for nine from three. He's going to make that shot. And he plays with, he plays very smart, played under Greg Popovich for a little bit. I think that has something to do with it. But Derek White, I think he has the length, the shooting ability, the ability to play defense. The ability to, like, be calm under pressure and lead the troops around him, right? Like, he's not going to go to the lane and yam on you. But guess what? There probably someone's on his team that can yam on you, right? So if he can kind of get that out of you, I think I'd draw the line probably at a Derek White. Do you Does Chris Stops fall in that, though? Because, like, Ooh. I know he's injured right now. But, like, I mean, Chris Stops just seems like he would be unguardable, right? Like, you know, like Donovan 
like current Donovan Klingon, there's no way he's guarding current Kristaps Porzingis healthy. I think I didn't even think of Porzingis, and I think that's my fault because I haven't been watching him lately because he's been out, and I think he'll be back for the finals, of course. But um, I would agree with you totally. I think that's a mismatch. I mean, that's a huge mismatch. I might mention him before Derek White. Yeah, I agree. And I do agree with White because, like, again, I, I think like a big thing is like these Illinois guys. You're realizing like the top player in Illinois, Terrence Shannon Jr maybe is a late first round pick this year where you're talking about Derek white, where if like, we're talking about current Derek white, he would be the number one draft pick because he's just better than all these yeah, for sure. at this point. Right. Yeah. Uh, PJ yeah, Washington, yeah. I would say no, I don't think PJ Washington is skilled enough. Yeah. I, I, on PJ, I would just say he's having an amazing run, like awesome run. I just think his talents are really being shown because of those other two guys on the court. Because a lot of times, and again, credit to him for making the shots, but he's kind of just lining them up. Right? Yeah. Like, he's not, I don't know how much he's creating off the dribble. Like, if you watch the Celtics, Derek White is creating off the dribble. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah, yeah. he's attacking the pain. He's finding his shooters, right? I don't I don't know if PJ has. Maybe he has that. He hasn't had the time to show it. Um, but, I mean, at a college level, I think his confidence was soared through. And, you know, but I don't know. I think I, 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 I'd be a little hesitant to put PJ as that number one guy on the college team that could lead you to a championship just because of also maybe some intangibles that I haven't seen yet, I feel like. I got one more for you because this is the most interesting one. Uh, Let's change up the example. We'll keep UConn, right? But Mm -hmm. what what, what college team do you think you watched the most this year? Like, did you keep up with Syracuse at all? I would actually – I did not watch Syracuse as much as I watched, like, because I'm out here, as much as I watched the atrocious USC uh, Trojans. I literally went to a game in person, uh, watched uh, LeBron come into the building at halftime. It went crazy. Um, But it was just a disappointing performance. I mean, like, you're, you know, you would think here, you know, in Southern California, you know, where there's historic programs, UCLA, USC, right across towns, that there would be high-powered men's basketball. The women's side, and again, I was paying a lot of attention to the women's side just because of Juju. And, you know, all the squad the USC had, and they're just going to get better and better and better. But the men's side, man, is disappointing. So, But I still think that's who I followed, I feel like, the most just because of the nature of being out here. Hey, man, three hours makes a difference. It's a big yeah. difference. It does. Okay, well, 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 we'll throw USC. We'll look at Syracuse. We'll keep the Illinois example, right? I mean, yeah. they're all generally – like, I know once you had an NBA player, they all become increasingly better. But right. here's the player. You add current Al Horford to one of these teams. And the reason I bring up Al Horford, because he's 37 years old, but he won right. two national championships at Florida. Right. So a guy like him that's done it at the college game, that knows how to get it done, could 37-year-old Al Horford take one of these pretty good power conference teams and win a national championship? No. 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 I'm I think sorry. he could. I'm going to have to say Yes. As the number one option, like you're running your offense through L. Horford at 37 years old, because I I know it's impressive what he's doing, but it ain't no defenders in his face when he's shooting those threes. This that's a good point. See, that's a good point. I I didn't think that far ahead, so my critical thinking is down a little bit. But his physicality, like what college player, is, like if the NBA guys can't get around his screens. Yeah, I mean he's I mean he's big L for a reason. He's rock solid for a reason. I just think it would have to be a team with great guard play, guys that can get to the bucket, guys that create offense, because he I don't think he's at a point in his career. If we're talking about dropping him right now, how he's playing into that kind of world, I just think he would need someone around him um yeah. to be the number one and number two option. Like right now, if you look at it, L. Horford is not our number one, not number two, not three, not four, probably like our sixth option maybe on offense right we're not going through him so defensive wise he can be your leader right in the paint he can control all of that he offensive wise i mean he can set the screens and kind of free up your guys for sure uh i i don't know if he can be the number one guy i think he'll need some help but shout out big al man give him some credit i like it dude it's just like i'm think i'm like rethinking this like even more and more like i'm looking at peyton pritchard his senior year, Oregon went 24 Yo. and 7. And think Yo. about how good Pritchard is now. Yo, I would take Pritchard over L right now. 
as far as the college stuff goes, just because he's like so. The dude still shoots like in the 40s for as far as his three point percentage goes, right? Like he doesn't get a lot of playing time. He's efficient and he's a lot of energy, young legs. Like, yeah, that's a great name, man. That's awesome. It's crazy to think about. It's crazy to think about that, but it's also crazy to think about like these guys in college. And I'm going to transition here because this is the perfect time. Uh, yeah. These guys in the NBA were once in college. They weren't nearly as good as they are now. Like they, people improve so much once they reach the league. Sure. But teams are going to need someone to kind of start that process, right? Yep. Can you think of an NBA team off the top of your head? I got a couple that, that just need to ace this year's NBA draft. Like it's not a great draft. I'll be straight up with this. This is one of the weakest drafts. So if you're going to ace this draft, you better pick smart. Like, I don't even want to talk about the players because I don't know what the players are going to be. Like, I got my eye on a few guys. I think Jared McCain yeah. is a really good shooter out of Duke. Yeah. Uh, we know that Alex Sar is probably going to be the number one pick. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, what team is it like a make-or-break draft for? The Spurs. Well, I, I, I would like to – I do want to see the uh, order. I completely – like, I don't have it in front of me either. But the, if the draft order I, – I think the, – but the Spurs have to be up there, right, because they they were atrocious as far as winning and cool. losing goes. I mean, I think if the Spurs are able to get somebody to just assist, literally and figuratively, Wembenyama, I think he can. I mean, he's already going to take his game to the next level. I think he's going to enter enter that superstar realm like LeBron did his second year, like, you know, Tim Duncan, these guys that won in the beginning, the defensive player of the awards, all that. Um, I think if the Spurs can get the guy, they can nail it. You know, someone who can like a Mike Conley type guy who just is good brains, you know, have good head on his shoulders, almost like a coach on the court. Um, I think the Spurs could, man, really, really take off if they if they nail it. Yo, I, I like this, too, because the Spurs have the fourth pick in the draft. They also have the okay. eighth pick. So they have two oh. chances. See, now I bet you people are going to talk about them trading those two to get a veteran. Well, honestly, I would want someone that's his age to come up with them together, right? So, like, when you're 24, 25, when Wimbin Yama is at that age, I would want the guy, his partner in crime, to be around the same age. Whereas I think some people might say, hey, let's draft, the, let's trade these two guys for, like, a Paul George or for somebody that can come in and help right now. Well, by the time Paul George or by the time Wimbin Yama is in the prime of his career, four or five years down the line, right? Paul George is not. Paul George is, you know, outside of his prime. So I think bringing in a couple of guys, if they have two picks, shoot, bring in a couple of guys, and hopefully they're the right dudes. That's the hard part, you know, to nail the guys, and then they can grow together. That's, you know, that's how I personally would look at it. Now I know how the NBA works, and it's a superstar-driven league. So who knows? That's enough ammo to trade stuff, you know, and get and get some get a veteran back maybe. But I wouldn't go that direction. I'm looking at uh, another team right here, and this is interesting to me. Uh, Oklahoma City. I was so I was thinking about Oklahoma City, but they picked. Oh, okay. go ahead. They picked twelfth. Yeah. Remember how they stacked up all these draft picks? Yep. But this is like this is going to be their last chance to add another asset, and I just think that it's going to catch up with them, right? Because they're going to have to pay all these stars. They're going to have all these future picks, but they're no longer going to be lottery picks. So where right. do they go from here? Honestly, that is the team to get a veteran. Mm-hmm. Like, that's who needs it. I think they the, I think they still are the youngest team in the entire league, and they were able to get the first seed, make it to the second round. You have a bona fide number one option in SGA. You got guys that can shoot around him. You got a good uh, rookie that's going into his sophomore season that was, you know, Rookie of the year if it wasn't for a generational player in Victor. And I think if you just get another guy in there that's been in the league for a little bit, um, I mean, like a PG, I think that would go well with, you know, I know he'd be going back to Oklahoma City. Um, I've heard rumblings of Kevin Durant back to OKC. Someone like that, like that can just fill out that entire roster and kind of just fit in. That's what Kevin Durant does, right? He just kind of fits in. He doesn't need you to create your own offense. He kind of just fits into whatever you got going on, and he'll get you 25 efficiently from there. I mean, I think, honestly, that's what OKC needs. I don't think they need another, you know, guy at that, uh, the position that you said, I think 12th you said. Um, and, again, like, I don't know what your thoughts are, but the draft just isn't as deep. 
I don't know a lot of these guys, honestly. Um, Sam Presti is amazing at drafting and developing players. So, but I just think that OKC should just go out and, you know, did what they do last year when they got Gordon Hayward. Just this time, make sure it's not Gordon Hayward. It's somebody better. (laughs) Yeah, no, I'm with you right now. I'll throw out one last team, and and this is just my opinion, uh, is the New York Knicks. Two first-round picks. The Knicks have not had consistent first-round picks for a while uh, because Mm. of multiple trades they've had. So the fact they have two now, like you're talking about two chances to land someone. We talk about a Knicks team that I think could use a veteran and a future prospect. I think they could use one and the other. Uh, let's you, you know, have your keep, eyes on anyone that you think the Knicks could draft. It's just like that deep because it's not a deep draft. So I think when you're right. talking about there, like you're talking about either someone that falls that maybe was supposed to go late lottery or or, or late teens that falls exactly. down a little bit, or take a chance on a senior, right? Like someone who yep. already like kind of worked out in the past. So I think it could work out again for New York, but you know, Man, a lot I, of these teams you know, that you name are just a piece or two away from getting yep. to the final. Yep, they really are. But hey, we're running up on like 25 minutes, a little bit Look longer than we see. But this is a Look fun talk. You have fun. This is a fun talk. So man, I get hey, all day with you, man. I missed it. We'll get you on soon. We'll get you on soon. It's been fun, dude. Celtics in seven. We agree. We both want opposite things. I don't want my pick to be right. I know you really do. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, all right, dude. College Basketball Review Courtside, again, just let us know in the comments who you want to hear next. Make sure to subscribe to us as well. Forgot to say that in the beginning. If you're listening this long, then just bless you for doing that. Uh, We'll talk to you.